Transgressive cinema. Cinema has always been a big part of people's lives, and I want to discuss the reasons why this might be. Providing an escape from the real world and letting us be completely immersed in another world is one of the reasons why it's so powerful. People get an escape from their everyday lives and feel like they have somewhere else to go to. Starting with the history of cinema and how it has evolved, changing and progressing just as society does. How does cinema affect our feelings and have such an impact? The filmmakers take a look at what makes society tick and put it on the screens. They're really good at manipulating our emotions. Why do we feel like we're scared or shocked? These are typically feelings that we want to avoid, but when they are on the screen, why do we get such a rush? Cinema can make us feel brave, and the impact that cinema has on our emotions is one of the reasons so many are passionate. Finally, I will discuss the reason that society moves on why films have become more and more transgressive to wow and shock the audience. Is it just that we've what we view as taboo is always changing, or is it that society is becoming desensitised and themes are getting old, if they have been done time and time again? This presentation will be focused on the films Psycho by Hitchcock, the Wrong Turn film series, the Hannibal TV series, Fifty Shades of Grey and The Secretary. The first to present projected moving pictures to a paying audience, i.e. cinema, with Lumiere Brothers in December 1895 in Paris. Films at the time were not completely silent, as they would have had music to add comedy, or someone narrating the images at the time. At this point, the idea of cinema itself was transgressive, a new idea that wowed and shocked audiences that was quite rare to see at the time. It was hard for audiences to grasp the idea of cinema, and how the moving images captured didn't burst out of the screen. No one had ever seen any moving pictures before, so something as simple as a train driving by shocked the audiences and made for a great show. Nowadays, it would take a lot more than a train driving by to shock our audiences as they would find this quite boring. In 1914, film industries around the globe started rising and slowly over the years, they would add colour and sound to enhance the whole cinema experience. During the 20th century, this was all new and exciting, finding ways of making the experience better. In modern day, it's not likely we would see anything new when it comes to the technical side of film. Maybe the occasional additions of effects in 3D and 4D cinema to really capture the whole experience. But the way the filmmakers use empathy and the events in society to capture an audience's feelings are what really matters. Knowing what shocks the audience will make them laugh, targeting a certain group of people in society. I will start with comparing the way horror and thriller films have developed throughout the years, specifically looking at Psycho, Wrong Turn and Hannibal. Psycho by Hitchcock is a very well known film from the 50s. Even though those that haven't seen the film know about the infamous shower starring scene, with its sharp, eerie music, the scene captured audiences all over, giving them a thrill. Anyone watching the film today for the first time might find it quite humorous and exaggerated, but at the time, this was what it took. It takes a lot more than scary music and shadows now to get the adrenaline rush going in people. Taking a look at the film Wrong Turn, a film made mostly for the gore and shock effect, a group of deformed cannibals living in the mountains, capture a group of travellers and perform awful acts on them. Acts like, of course, chopping them up and eating them. Unlike in the film Psycho, where we don't see the victim killed with all the gory details, Wrong Turn does nothing to spare the audiences from the gross details. They even zoom in sometimes just to let you know exactly what's happening in the picture. From people being eaten and skinned alive, we see everything happen before our very own eyes. The audience is typically shocked and sickened, and it may be the goriest film they have watched, and so the effect is even greater. So why do people want this feeling? Think about why anybody would want to see something so wrong in HD and surround sound. It could be due to the dark fantasies that people want to see played out, or the fact that we get a big rush from being scared, that becomes all too addictive. 
The challenge is to make sure that audiences always get to experience this rush. But as time goes on and society becomes more open, filmmakers need to step up the shock factor. Of course, many people wouldn't be able to stomach such films and prefer other emotions being brought out. To make the film or series successful, the directors add violence and sexuality together. Playing on the secret kinks in society, people may typically feel too embarrassed to talk about. This takes place in the series Hannibal. The raw violence we see then being explained in slow detail that we can appreciate and in some cases see as art. In the scenes, the bodies are being made into food and we almost don't think about the food being made from human flesh. Everything the character Hannibal does is slow and sensual, pulling the audience in. We can describe the movements he does to cow the meat as sexualized. Everything looks very smooth and done in a proper way that makes us want to be him, or even the meat that he's eating. The way it is prepared to look like fine dining draws us in, almost making us want to taste the food, even though we know he's a cannibal and we wouldn't want to, typically. This form of transgression, a wealthy cannibal, making murder and cannibalism look high-end, and almost as though this is what people aspire to be. Audiences want to feel what it is to be Hannibal without committing the acts themselves. This is a very different feeling we get compared to the wrong turn films, which make us feel sick and make killing look raw and dirty. The same idea put into different contexts. Hannibal shows society's deepest taboos and fantasies being played out. We watch this and escape reality messed up and raw feelings that we get to experience through somebody else. We can enjoy watching this on our TV and still feel sane because we can justify our feelings as simply enjoying some TV. There are many different types of transgression in cinema. As well as shock and horror, there are films that are made to arouse the audience. My two main films of focus are Fifty Shades of Grey and The Secretary. As I mentioned earlier, not everyone wants to feel shocked or scared. Sometimes cinema can bring out other powerful emotions. These emotions can be hidden in people and cinema helps them escape. The theme in these films are quite taboo in the way that sex is something not often talked about particularly sex that involves mixing kinks with pleasure and pain. Watching these films will bring out the confidence people need to enjoy their secret pleasures. Cinema takes a transgressive topic and desire and normalises these desires. If we look at films in the early 20th century, it was unspeakable to have such graphic raw scenes. As time moved on and society grew, we wanted to see cinema push the boundaries of what is acceptable. All this can be linked with Howard Becker's labelling theory to explain why we need cinema to escape. As a society, we have a way of shaming people that don't fit in and we label them as deviant or weird or alien. A lot of people hide who they really are and their true desires. Film and cinema gives them a means of escape from ordinary life. Without transgressive cinema, a lot of people wouldn't have a way of expressing themselves. This can be done through watching the film, or even being a director or producer or a writer and putting your thoughts and ideas out into the world of film. It doesn't just have to be an escape for the audience. Transgressive cinema can provide an escape for everybody that is a part of the production.